Hello everyone, welcome back to another quick capsule review. My name is Tom. Uh, we are watching clips from the lovely, lovely film Black Book by Paul Verhoeven. First of a trilogy of B-movies that we're watching today. Um, the uh, subjects of today's quick capsule review are Black Book, uh, which was, as far as I know, the last Paul Verhoeven movie he directed. Um, Blade 2 and Bedknobs and Broomsticks. Um, so they're not B-movies in any sort of uh, critical sense. But um, we'll our first one that we just saw a clip from stars uh, Carice Van Houten, the lovely uh, woman in red um, uh, from uh, Game of Thrones. In one of her debut features, uh, Paul Verhoeven had famously gotten sick of Hollywood after doing Starship Troopers and Hollow Man and a series of movies, I guess stemming all the way back to Showgirls, that were somewhat successful financially but critically pan. And he really wanted to do something uh, personal. And so Black Book is the story of a Jewish woman uh, who joins the Dutch resistance uh, to the Nazis and um, infiltrates them by seducing an SS officer. Um, it's really an incredible film. Uh, you know, watch it with a snifter of cognac because uh, he does uh, shit all over his characters. Uh, my, I watched it with my brother and he said it was like taking a beating. And uh, but it's a fantastic film, great war film. When you when you watch a movie like Black Book, you realize that Inglorious Bastards, as good as it is, is just cosplaying as a as a World War II film. This is the real deal. Um, so our next uh, film is Blade Two. Uh, we're gonna watch a quick little scene here of uh, Blade meeting the team. He uh, is recruited by Danny John Jules, A.K.A. Cat from Red Dwarf and a beautiful actress whose name escapes me to um, join the vampires against the super vampires. That's all you need to know. Of course you can also tell that uh, because due to the presence of Ron Perlman it is a Guillermo del Toro movie. Ah, uh, there she is. I love her. One of the guys in this gang is the blind guy from um, Star Wars Rogue One. Okay. This has a quite a cast, actually. Um, you've got everyone from um, uh, Daryl from The Walking Dead, and uh, of course uh, Guillermo himself. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Oh, Christopher, uh, Chris Christopherson. Um, all, all kinds of good actors in this one. Um, I would say it's probably one of my favorite Guillermo del Toro films. That may be sacrilege, but uh, a lot of his stuff is just depressing for no reason to, for me. Um, I particularly uh, disliked Pan's Labyrinth. Um, some of his stuff, like The Devil's Backbone, is really good, um, even though it is super dark. But uh, Blade manages to cut a nice, um, uh, cut a nice middle ground uh, of good, solid actioner and uh, a, you know a somewhat somber ending. But um, de definitely one of my favorite uh, films. But I, 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 I pretty much like most of the Blade franchise. I have to revisit three. Uh, it's probably hot garbage, but um, I even like the TV show that had uh, sticky fingers as Blade. So I'm kind of a, a fanboy. Um, next we have Bedknobs and Broomsticks, which has one of the funniest uh, musical scenes I've ever seen, because there's a social contract that exists between an, between an audience and a filmmaker uh, that, that says that if you're going to do a musical number, it somehow has to advance the plot. Bedknobs and Broomsticks is the only uh, movie I've ever seen where a musical number actively inhibits the plot, and it, it starts to become hilarious. They're trying to find this um, half of a, a magic book in London, 
and uh, in the midst of this musical number, um, uh, the main characters are like, you know, struggling, struggling to find this book, and and these dancers from all different backgrounds are like showing up and like dragging them away from their search. It has uh, Angela Lansbury in it uh, before she, long before she uh, became famous on uh, Murder She Wrote for killing all of her cousins and and hiding it, hiding the crimes under under other people's uh, responsibilities. Um, bed knobs and broomsticks, my favorite scene, and the reason I've I've frequently wanted to bring it to the attention of uh, um, Hollywood upcycling is that I think the 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 concept of uh, a witch animating armored knights to battle Nazis is just so delicious that it could actually carry a much darker movie. Like if if you took it out of the the uh, childhood context, my, I have the worst mouse in the world. Um, uh, I think it would be pretty amazing. Here's some of that s that scenery. Sands the music because I, I get the feeling Disney's uh, really one of the the worst people to try to get a copy strike from. Um, but this is the uh, the scene where uh, the novice witch Angela Lansbury uh, summons all these suits of armor to to repel a Nazi incursion into the British Isles and I think it's a uh, you know it's, it's very well done um, for its time it's played for laughs but you know if you had some sort of movie like um, uh, God, what was the what was the one that the not charmed what am I thinking of oh my god and, you know that the the one with the the witches um, that were like a uh, fiery a balk and all those guys you'll, you'll remind me of the name of the movie in the comments Anyway, if you had like something that was like kind of like a little bit dark like that, um, uh, that it, it actually would work pretty well um, as a as a little horror movie. But yeah, I, I love these things. I'm gonna skip ahead to Nazis getting what's due. Let's see. Yeah, get them. Get those Nazis. This this the kids in this movie were uh, incredibly annoying, like typical Disney brats, but. Um, there's something endearing about about all the characters in this movie. The only time it really falters is when they go to a uh, an animated sequence where they're they have to like go underwater and it turns into this completely ridiculous animated thing, which would all be just CGI shit now. But uh, it, it's still a little dis detracted a little bit from the uh, from the film, um, mainly because the lion looked like. He was the exact same lion from uh, the sheriff of Nottingham. Um, so it was almost like he was just slumming uh, and hanging out because he, uh, you know, he just had a really good agent who could get him all these Disney roles. But um, anyway, I think I think this movie deserves uh, a, a revisit um, if, if you're if you're in the mood for some good family fare. It's it's lovely. That is about it for today. Um, hopefully, we're going to get on a more of a regular schedule for these. Um, if you have any comments about any of these films, feel free to post them below, and uh, we will talk again soon. Have a good one.